In this video, we're going to talk about the most important things that you need to be doing to score highly in section two of the BMAT. So let's just dive straight in. Firstly, a quick apology if I sound a little bit nasal in this video. I'm slightly run down because, as you know, I help a lot of people one-on-one -on -one with their applications to medical school. And with the deadline fast approaching for UCAS submissions, I'm slightly under the weather, but it's absolutely fine and we're smashing through it and everybody is doing really well. So if you want to get involved with that, you can check that out in the description below. But all of our preparation at the moment is really around getting people in the best possible shape for their BMAT. So here we're going to talk about how to nail the section two. The reason that we're doing this one first is because this section really requires you to truly understand the principles and the questions are going to be the application of it and you can only answer those correctly if you truly understand things rather than are just familiar with it and we'll talk about the difference between those two a bit later. So as we know the BMAT is a two hour exam 30 minutes are dedicated to section two. And in that, you get seven questions for chemistry, seven for physics, seven for biology, and then six for maths. So that works out at 66 seconds per question. And remember that it's to the level of GCSE knowledge. So that's the same if you've done IGCSEs. But also don't worry if you haven't done GCSEs because if you've gone to school and you're learning science and maths, you will have covered these subjects to the kind of level that we need you to understand it for the BMAT. So we're going to talk through some of the subjects and the common mistakes that people make or common questions that come up and the ways people trip up on those. So when we're sitting the section two, of course we want to be aiming for the best possible score we can get. But the BMAT say that typical is about half marks and seven or above is exceptional. Remember that it's from one to nine, nine being the highest. However, if you're aiming for an Oxbridge Uni, typically about 6.1 is what they aim for at least in this section. Just to reiterate the announcement that came out recently is that for the first time this year, the BMAT will be sat exclusively on computer unless you're in Thailand or Singapore and the BMAT official website so Cambridge Assessment have released a new online practice question that you can do so a mock exam for you to try there. Okay so now we're going to take each subject from section two and talk through the common pitfalls that people make and then at the end we're going to go through the highest yield tips of kind of the five most important things that I reckon you should do to make sure that you score the highest. So one of the trickiest subjects is physics so we'll start with that one first because that has the most pitfalls. I'll put on screen a copy of the syllabus now of the subjects that you need to be not just familiar with but really understand well so that you can apply these principles and score highly. Common subjects that are misunderstood are things like energy transfer. So make sure you understand things like conduction, convection, radiation, surfaces that are matte versus shiny as to whether they'll absorb or reflect heat, and then things that are insulators versus heat conductors. Really understanding those materials because they will apply questions and kind of situations where they really test your understanding of those things. Another area that trips people up frequently is the graphs of speed, distance and time. Now it's important to know the difference between a distance versus time graph and a speed versus time graph because the implications for for example the area under the surface mean different things and people often get confused between the two. Of course here acceleration questions come in and it's important to understand the calculations of how to work those out. Questions around electricity, circuits and resistance are often done badly too and later in the video I'm going to show you a resource where you can kind of understand all of the definitions really well to make sure that you don't fall into the kind of small little hair splitting questions traps that they ask you in the BMAT. And that's the main thing that I want you to take away from this particular section. Knowing your definitions is absolutely key because really it's the technical knowledge that they're going to trip you upon. What they'll say is things that are close but technically not correct and it's actually the similarity or the kind of very technical difference between the two things that will mean the difference between getting the marks and not. Now let's look at chemistry and what subjects you need to know but also the common pitfalls that occur there. So again on screen you've got all the core topics that you need to make sure that you have an in-depth knowledge of. The main area that I see my students lose marks on in the chemistry part of section two is on questions surrounding kind of concentration, moles, volume, and all that sort of stuff. Typically you'll get presented with a question that on balance seems like a simple calculation of concentration is moles divided by volume, but actually they have missed a step and that leads to the wrong answer. The temptation is to dive straight in with punching in the numbers and working out the calculation. But actually what people don't realize is that first they actually need to balance the equation to work out the ratios, get the units right, and then they should do the calculation to get the correct answer. So here it is so important to make sure you understand your ratios and your units. And again, a bit later, I'm going to show you exactly how you can get that knowledge to make sure that that is 
on point for the VMAT. So the biology subjects that I recommend that you know in depth for this exam are cells, movements across membranes, cell division and sex determination, inheritance, DNA, gene technologies, variation, enzymes, animal physiology and ecosystems. These are the ones that come up commonly and just having good knowledge of that will help. And then for math subjects that I recommend you know are units, numbers, ratios and proportions, algebra, geometry, statistics and probability. Okay, so as promised, now the main event, which is my five top tips for scoring highly in section two of the BMAT. My first tip is to start with this section first in your preparation. The reason that we do this first is because, as I said, it's not just about knowing stuff, it's about having an in-depth understanding of the principles and how to apply them. So taking time to really learn this stuff well and know the applications of it is going to set you in a really good place. So if you want something that's going to give you all the information that you need and those little traps to avoid and all of them and how to make sure that you don't fall into them, I'd recommend you check out the brand new online course that I've made specifically for this year's sitting of the BMAT. As I say, it's going to give you all of that in-depth knowledge that you need as well as looking out for the common traps and then just tricks to make sure that you don't fall into them. My second tip is to not fall into the trap of confusing familiarity with knowing. This is such a profound lesson that if you can understand this early on in life, it's going to help you not just with this but with your medical career or just generally is such an important thing to grasp. There's a quote from a great physicist called Richard Feynman who says, I learned very early the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something. It's the difference between memorization and understanding. If you take the average person on the street and ask them if they know what electricity is, they'll be able to say, oh yeah, of course, you, you know, you turn the switch on and the light comes on. But actually, if you get them to explain what's going on and how it works, 99% of people probably don't know how to explain that to you. And that's why not for just this test, but for life, it's so vital that if you want to have in-depth knowledge of something, you don't get caught in the trap of just recognizing the name and actually know what it's about. So the test for that is, can you explain it? If you can explain the concept to someone and not get tripped up, and maybe if they don't understand it, you can go about it in a different way, kind of explaining it by a different route, then that is a pure test of whether you truly, truly understand something. Tip number three is to learn all the relevant formulae and make sure that you understand the associated units. So that means, again, you know them in depth, you're able to rework them and, and kind of change them around based on the situation, and also are able to convert between different units that are associated with those formulae. And tip number four is to make sure that you're not only working in the right units so making sure that you're kind of doing kilometers per hour versus meters per second but also that you understand the orders of magnitude so milli nano kilo etc so number five and probably the most important tip is to remember that the bmat has no negative marking so even if you're not sure always always take a guess if you want a little bit more information about tactics and techniques to score well in the BMAT, check out this playlist that I've put together here. Otherwise, if you want to know the best resource for helping you score highly in the BMAT, check out this video here. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.